let's go on a bike ride. Quick question, guys. Is anybody waiting for the review of the CYC Stealth? Let me know in the comments, because I did make, what, like two, three videos dedicated to that mid-drive motor so far. And if you guys watch those videos, I think you kind of know my final thoughts on it. Um, but I'm totally down to make a dedicated, you know, CYC mid-drive uh, review video. If it's, you know, popular demand. Um, I still have that noise, by the way. I'm sure you guys can hear it. And, okay, let me stop. Ugh. So, the, the, the issue with my free wheel is completely fixed, no issues there anymore. But every time I do a rotation of the arms in the same spot, there's like a thud. I completely disassembled the bottom bracket, and when I spin the pedals backwards, there's no issue at all. It's buttery smooth. Only when I go in this direction, right here, there's like a thud, and I can feel it in the pedals, and I have no idea what it is. I didn't over-tighten any of the bolts. And at this point, it's just frustrating me. But, I mean, besides that, love the product. Great product. It's working well. I've been using it in combination with my hub. And life is just good. You know, let's go this way. Use some of that mid-drive action. I noticed that I, I only use my mid-drive motor when moving slow. Do you guys uh, concur with that? Like, see this scenario, a little tight turn, going uphill. Mid-drive is great. But when I'm on the road going like 20, 25, what is this? Is this a sidewalk? It is a sidewalk. Mid-drive. Um... What is this place? Okay, well, I don't need to be here. It was a fun sidewalk, I mean, 10 out of 10. But I'm going back. Okay, so yeah, with the mid-drive, let me know if you guys want to see another dedicated video on it. If not, I won't do it. But for this video, I want to talk to you guys about the brand new Electric X Premium. Now, Electric is a very popular and reputable brand in the e-bike space. And I think they focus on budget, right? Is that their whole lineup? Budget offerings? The most popular bike they have is the Electric XP 2.0. That's, uh, that's actually a very compelling bike. It's a thousand bucks, hub motor, I think it's like 750 watts, something like that. It's fat tires, it's a folding bike. Really great value for what it is. And they just released the X Premium model, which is very similar, it's still a folding bike, but it's a mid-drive folding bike. And I don't know of any other mid-drives that are foldable. So that in and of itself is pretty cool. It's still relatively budget, so it's less than 2,000 bucks for being a mid-drive, which is another pretty cool feature. It comes in at 1,800 bucks, but with taxes and shipping, it's gonna easily be over 2,000 probably. What else is special about this bike? The motor is 500 watts nominal, 800 peak. It can get you up to a speed of 28 miles an hour. That's what they advertise. And the battery situation is kind of unique here. So it's just 48 volts, but it has two separate battery packs and both are like 10.4 amp hours. So combined, that's basically the capacity I have right here, 20 amp hours. And on that mid-drive system, they're saying that I think the throttle only rating was 50 miles, which, okay, you take that with a grain of salt. But even so, that's a very uh, long range bike. Man, I love that little shortcut. I actually did conduct a poll on this channel the other day asking you guys your opinion on this bike. And if I recall, it was somewhat split. Some of you guys said it was a good value for what it was, and others said you're not interested in the bike, which I can understand. So I think if you look at this bike in terms of value for the money, 
I think it does make a lot of sense. I mean, what other mid drives are less than 2,000 bucks with fat tires, had a folding ability, with a pretty massive range? Uh, it's, it's very compelling in that way. But the, the, the company itself, Electric, they, they focus on mass adoption, right? They're not really... Okay. That guy just decided he wanted to kill me today. Thank God I put new brake fluid in. I kind of saved my life. But, okay, Electric XP. The This company focuses on the masses, right? It's not like a high-performance brand or anything like that. But for the average person, I don't know if a mid-drive is really the best option. The Their, their basic XP 2.0, which is less money and has a hub motor, I think for the average person, which is what this is marketed to, that's the better option. And that's just because hub motors are a great overall package that are very low maintenance and they just work. They're extremely reliable. Like if I was gonna recommend an e-bike to my sister who's not really, you know, mechanically inclined or anything like that, I would totally recommend the regular XP 2.0 versus the premium. But okay, that's just my opinion. You guys can fight me in the comments. There's like a trail here I want to do. Here's the trail. I think this is the trail. Ugh. Oh gosh. Ugh. Take your electric XP premium on this. Oh yeah. I know this stuff doesn't look fun on video, but in real life, this is really just making my day. Um, oh, we have a civilian. Big roots. Uh, I should avoid that civilian. Uh. Whew. But to quickly finish up on the whole hub motor mid-drive debate, I think the best of both worlds is the GMAC motor I talked about in my last video. That's of course it's a hub motor, but it's geared, it has regen, it's kind of the motor that has all the benefits in one. And even on trails like this, I would have no problem using that GMAC motor. It has a good amount of low-end torque, just like a mid-drive offers you. But the simplicity and reliability of a hub motor. Okay, does the trail continue? No bikes. Okay, well, I'm being discriminated against. Where does this go? Why is it getting so steep? Um, okay. Oh gosh. Uh, uh, big rocks and I'm hitting all of them. Okay. I suck at this. Uh. Is this going all the way down to the lake? Oh, it is. Ooh, if I had regen right now in that GMAC motor, that would have been so efficient. All right, it's pretty nice. Having a nice little fun adventure here. Up, oh, another civilian. I don't think this is supposed to be a biking trail, so I'm gonna shut off the motor and go complete stealth mode and give a wave. Got a wave back. We're all good. Good amount of pickup right now. I'm using a 28 tooth gear in the back, and at least with my setup, I found that to be pretty, pretty effective. I do have okay. I, I have a gripe with the mid drive. I know on YouTube you're not supposed to complain. It's all like rainbows and sunshine, but just to be real with you guys, I've noticed a problem or I don't know something I personally don't like about just the way the mid drives function. <sighs> Okay, time for all you guys to hate me in the comments. 
Okay, so when I got a mid-drive, I had the expectation I would be pedaling it a lot because at least this one has a built-in torque sensor, so it's supposed to be very natural feeling when you pedal. But I only really pedal this bike when I'm off-road like this or just starting from a dead stop because the problem with this is that you and the motor use the same gears and of course the motor can spin a lot faster than your legs. And that's why a lot of e-bikes have bigger front sprockets and low gears in the back. So that way at higher speeds you can actually maintain the, the pedaling cadence. But when you share the gears with the motor which can spin a lot faster than your legs. It's just kind of a mismatch and you can only really do this at slow speeds I noticed. And I didn't mean to do this but if we tied this conversation back. Try not to die to the GMAC geared hub. Because the motor has separate gears than the drivetrain that you use, you can actually have the best of both worlds. So you can put a pretty large sprocket in the front so you can keep up the pedaling at a speed like this, which I can't right now. That can give you really effective pedal assist and the motor itself remains in an optimal gear ratio. But before I go, I do want to quickly touch on something else which is a couple of videos ago I mentioned at the end how I was working on starting a Patreon for this channel and that would allow any of you guys that are generous enough to support the channel to do so and help fund uh, future project builds and just better content for the channel. And I was contemplating the perks to offer you guys for helping support the channel and I think the ones that everybody wants, you guys can correct me below in the comments, is both early access to videos and ad-free videos. And to accomplish that, I think uh, using Patreon actually isn't the way to go. Because YouTube has a built-in uh, membership kind of thing. So when I first publish my videos, I can set it to member only and ad free. So that's how you guys can enjoy it. And then after like an hour or two, I can set it to public, enable the ads. And that can be uh, a benefit of becoming a member of the channel and helping support what I do here. But of course, you guys can leave your opinions in the comments down below. And let me know if you even want to support the channel. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it. But YouTube did say that in order to get people to be channel members, I would need significant promotion quote unquote so it's a little bit intimidating I might wait until the channel is a little bit bigger to start this but that's just kind of what I'm thinking at the current moment but of course if you guys want to support the channel for free go ahead and subscribe leave a like it's always greatly appreciated and I'll catch you guys in the next one